So good morning. When Hananiah interferes with God's object lesson, what does God do about it? So today we're going to the third of four parts dealing with this, all in chapter 28. Today we're looking at verses 10 to 14. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and broke it. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, Even so I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Now the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, You have broken the yokes of wood, but you have made in their place yokes of iron. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. I have given him also the beasts of the field. Now all the way back in chapter 27, verse 2, Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah to make yokes and put them on and, and wear them around, and he's been wearing them around since then. They haven't really been referenced too much since those early verses in 27, but nevertheless, Jeremiah hasn't been told not to, so he's still wearing the yoke as he continues his prophetic activities. So in the previous morning or two here, Hananiah, he issued prophecies, several prophecies that directly contradicted what Jeremiah the prophet had said at God's command. And now, to, to add insult to injury, I mean, Hananiah is way out of bounds, but now he actually goes to Jeremiah in the, the yoke that God told Jeremiah to make and put on himself. Hananiah grabs it, takes it off of him, and he breaks it. That's pretty high-handed. I mean, he's interfering with the object lesson that God asked Jeremiah to do. And this guy kind of uh, puts the bodily invasion on here and takes it away. Then he reiterates his claim that within two years, they will no longer be in bondage to Nebuchadnezzar. God's going to break that yoke. Now, Jeremiah walks away from this, but uh, shortly the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah and he says, go back, I've got something for you to say to Hananiah. And that's exactly what Jeremiah does. He turns around, he goes back, he comes face to face again with Hananiah. And the word is that God reaffirms that that yoke is still there. The nations are still bound to uh, be under the uh, superiority of, of Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. But now it's not a yoke of wood. Now it's a yoke of iron. Now, in other words, it's even much firmer. And at this point, it's clearly one, one person's word against another person's word. Which one is the true prophet? God does not usually stop false prophets from uttering their false prophecies. He lets them go. He lets them, he lets them chatter away. He lets them speak out their large claims. In the end, the claims of the true prophets are shown to be true, and the claims of the false prophets are shown to be false. And God wants us to compare what the prophets say with, with what his word is. He wants us to compare this with this so that we'll know what is true and what's not. If it's consistent with the Bible, then, boy, I think we're on the right track. If it's it, out of harmony with the Bible, obviously there's something, there's something clearly wrong. So he lets them speak, and he has a task for us. We are to sort it out somewhat ourselves. We're to listen and make our own decision. And the people who are immersed in the Bible, the people who read and study the Bible and pray, those people will be able very quickly, very readily to discern what matches what's in here and what is suspect, because it's, it's in contradiction to what's in here. And also, the presence of, of prophets disagreeing with each other tells us that, you know, there's true and false going on here. There's a spiritual reality going on. We are in the middle of a spiritual war. And so that actually reminds us, hey, the forces of good and evil are, are at it. Something's going on here. So let's pray about that. Dear Father in heaven, we know that you will not indefinitely let your high-handed enemies have their way and interfere with your work. We know that you're on your throne, and you're working through your faithful servants right now. But there are faithful servants being challenged by unfaithful servants. And so, Lord, we know you will support the true, those who are standing up where you tell them to stand up. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God be with you today as you follow the words of the true prophets.